the, the other um, tournament that's going on to the Wii Play? We, we Play? Mm -hmm. Dota Pit. I okay, here we go. Now we've got it on There it is. Camera Pangalier. here. We got the Pangalier first, first pick for Black Sheep. And no surprise, Jenkins, there's not going to be an Io or a Chen. Both of these guys are really, really strong right now. We were having that discussion earlier. Yeah, Chen is straight up over, over buffed. You know, when you rework a hero, uh, it's usually better, you know, from a development standpoint to just... Uh, speaking of which, Mars uh, yeah, is exactly... Oh, what we in. get the combo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the Mars Dark Willow. It's like, th these heroes are just uh, too good. Like, CC and C, I was playing with him in a pub the other day, and somebody picked Mars, and he's just like, this is not even a hero. This is not Dota when there's a Mars in the game. And uh, I find that the reworks can, can, can work like that as well, where they buff a hero to the point where it's just exceedingly good, and then they nerf it, because you'd, you'd rather people test something out and have it be good than just, you know, nobody knows what situation you should go for a holy locket, because it sucks, so nobody's building it, mm. so we don't have, we don't have these builds, like, form, you know, forming around holy locket, you'd rather something be kind of broken, and, uh, of course, Mars is, is very strong, especially with the Willow, because you have that uh, fear with yeah, the, the terror the eyes, ulti. being able to just throw it right into all the spikes coming out of the uh, arena. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty insane. So it was nerfed. It now does do uh, quite a bit less damage at level 1, but mm -hmm. it scales to be the same thing. And uh, in my opinion, this hero, when you rotate out of the lanes at level 6, you usually wanted to do it with another strong hero anyway. So, and, and I feel like before, but pre-nerf Mars, you would have enough damage with the ulti to kill somebody minus 100 HP. So you'd need somebody to do literally like 100 damage, and you could pair up with them and do, right. do some sort of rotation. Right. Now you need a little bit more damage, but it's still a ridiculous ulti. It still does a ton of damage. Willow, obviously, or like a Jug, something like that. These heroes can easily pump out you know, 300 damage in an engagement. You occupy an area with Mars, nobody else can be there as long as he has that ultimate up. It's pretty unreal. Now my other question, too, is we've actually seen Dark Willow got her Ags, and everyone was like, oh my gosh, she's a chain gun now, she does so much damage. But then they went and they did another patch oh, where yeah. they actually yeah. nerfed her base attack damage. This is not a great, like, it wasn't even like a crazy popular hero even before, right? Yeah. And then they really hit her hard with that nerf. Is this the only instance, really, that she's that good to pick up with, is with the Mars? Uh, I think I think there's there's probably other uh, scenarios. I do think the Ags is still is still quite strong. The BAT was nerfed quite a bit, which definitely hurts her early game and her supporting, of course, which is what a lot of people on Reddit were complaining about because, you know, she was being picked as a cord and you get nerfed in the support role. It kind of feels bad if you're a support Willow player. Yeah. But with that with that being said, I think there are probably other heroes you can pair Ten up with where it's really remaining. good. It's currently you know, very strong and popular, like a Wraith King, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to put Five it in the lane of Wraith King, you set up with a stun. Uh, Sand King, it's pretty good with, too. So I think, yes, like the combo does matter, but there's enough that you can combo with it that Willow is, is definitely in a, in a pretty good place right now, especially with Mars being you know, Dire team hero. pick. Grim that the Wraith King and the Sven have been completely ignored this entire time because I think Sven has like an 81% win rate right now in Birmingham. Yeah, and, he's looking uh, pretty good. The Wraith King, I almost said Skeleton King, my goodness. <laughs> but the, uh, the Wraith King pick, too, like the Skelly men are super, super strong. Like they're really, really good right now. Yeah. Why do you think they, they pass that up? Um, I guess, I Ten guess seconds they remaining. want a Monkey King carry. They're thinking of like a very specific carry that, that they want to pick. Five I, seconds my personal remaining. opinion on the Wraith King is the. My, my personal opinion on like the Wraith King Sven situation is essentially that. Um, Basically, they're the only carries left. <laughs> right. Like, carries are just getting continuously nerfed. There's less and less that it seems like you can pick. You know, Jug nerfed over and over again. Morphling nerfed. Um, you know, Lycan. Radiant Agon Scepter is awful. Luna is not a hero. Troll nerfs. Uh, I, I really think that, you know, Sven and... Uh, I said troll got nerfed, but he's still getting picked a lot. Like, he's troll. He has still a good. terrible win rate right now, though. He does. I think not what was I, I have a note on that actually. Forty-two, thirty-two percent, something like yeah, that. Yeah, very, burning, very burning low. Down. It's not. It's not. Yeah, he's great. been picked about. This is. These are a little bit off on the stats because this was like the other day when I was doing my notes. But he's been picked about eighteen times with Ten only a thirty-eight percent remaining. win rate. Yeah, if, if if you look at the top, probably around the same. If you look at the top picks Five in Birmingham seconds right now, remaining. it's it's there's like three carries that people are picking up. Uh, I do still think Ember Spirit is a, is a good safe lane carry. Like a good safe lane carry, you max out the Slight of Fist. Uh, you know, the build is very div diverse now, which is what makes him a good safe lane carry. But the thing is, that's a very particular style of hero that you're picking. Like, do you really want to have to pick this early game fighting style of hero? Do you really? Sometimes you just want somebody to hit jungle creeps for 
25 minutes, come out with a ton of items. And that's kind of just like Sven, Troll, Kie is not really a hero people are picking anymore. Wraith King with Radiance kind of does that, plus some other stuff. He's been buffed, and I think it's probably underrated at the start of the patch, but there's just less and less carries that people are able to do. Dire team so back. back into the competitive scene now, do you think we're going to start seeing some Gyrocopter pick up us again? That's a good point. That is a really good point when it comes to the carry pool being restricted. If IO does get through, the carry pool blows wide open. Right. Which you could argue that that is a huge strength of the hero, even though obviously it's not hard to, you know, point out strengths in Io, but that is a, even if Io was a weak hero, and that Ten was a, a strength remaining. of the hero, because there's, there's such a limited carry pool, that definitely would make the hero Five uh, quite a bit remaining. more Dire uh, team strong, pick. because, like, Gyro, have you ever seen Gyro without Io? Have you ever seen Bristle without Io? Like, these heroes we have, but they haven't been successful. They, it hasn't looked good, it hasn't looked good. Mm -hmm. um, Radiant with, with team the Io, pick. Final pick, this is going to be a death profit, though, here for Black Sheep, and that's been really popular, especially with the added uh, Aghanims now. It feels like it's very, very strong. I'm surprised to not see this picked up that much in, in Birmingham. It's uh, Death Prophet has seven, seven matches that she was played in, mm -hmm. and she's not even you know she's not even like the top twenty. I feel like everybody's man. still experimenting, right? They're trying Ten to figure out the next patch. Trying to figure, yeah, you know, and it's a very experimental time because we've only got one Five major minor left remaining. before TI, so everybody's trying to figure out you know what works, like not only with uh, you know team comp, but. Also, you know, in terms of, of what drafts, like, what's the meta? Are we still yep. going to have that one tempo controlling mid that's, uh, you know, going to be making all the space? And then, because we've seen some really creepy lineups. Yeah, you may now of select of your heroes. Tempo controlling mid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both of these heroes are quite adept at tempo controlling. Queen of Pain, I think, is significantly better. Uh, Death Prophet, at the very least, can run and, you know, take towers. Yeah. Queen of Pain can't really do that, but she, she just is a persistent fighter. She constantly wants to fight and kill so that's gonna be a comfort there's a lot of lockdown coming out from the side of uh of black sheep right you've got the lasso you've got uh fiend's grip nightmare on bane the silence on death prophet that's kind of scary to play into honestly you're... pango ulti is ridiculous lockdown too that, that's that too, yeah. the thing is like a, it's like a, it's a ravage if you're if you're good enough at this hero if you get a good enough angle with the roll it's it, you know, yeah, they've, they've, they've got a lot of lockdown i think that if uh cyber kingdom doesn't take the game early. I, I think that Black Sheep is a better player when it comes to this game. I believe that's a Pango support captain. That's Oceana, I think. I, I, I could see him changing his in-game mm -hmm. name to captain. So that would be a, a Pango 4, I believe. Okay, that's something that the Chinese teams have been doing for quite a while, too, is they were running the Pangolier as a 4 position. Prepare because they battle. figured that you could run it as a 3, but Looking generally good. the 4 can do the same thing. It just you're not going to have as much harm. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested that they are running the Batrider no. as a core Just. in this game because usually no. what happens when something you like that is picked up, where no. the hero can you know easily what's lead the Batrider and counter the Batrider. What you do is you just flex it to be a support because then it's like, okay, well now you're you know you're countering a, a support hero, so who cares? Yeah. But I think it's because uh, Pango is this... We, he's in this weird situation as a support where you are kind of useless for the first like two to three minutes, mm -hmm. and that's when Batrider is really strong, even against a counter pick. Bat, the, the jug spin has a really long cooldown at level one, so uh, Bat can actually like solo lane relatively easily. I think that's why uh, Pango support is good with the Sand King as well, because it's a relatively solo laner, mm -hmm. and uh, Pango can just kind of you know move around the map and get and get levels. Eventually, you become a core with, with Pango support. That's now, the thing. Now Pango can't silence anymore, right? He can only disarm. Correct. Correct. He can just disarm. Mm -hmm. So. My opinion on that is I, I think that even if they just changed it so that it was just a disarm, it would still be a buff to some degree. Even though they removed the silence, just because it makes it more consistent. Because now, all the Pango wants to do is just go in the hero that's doing the most right damage. Right. You're not going to accidentally silence a hero that doesn't care about getting silenced. You're, gonna, you're, guaranteed to di you're almost guaranteed to disarm with the you know, Swashbuckle begins. keep hitting somebody. Like, you know who to focus in fights now. It's not just, oh, I'm going to hope to get lucky and silence the Queen of Pain. Right. No, you're going to disarm the Jug. That's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more like uh, cut and dried for what you want for right, your objective right. during these fights for the lockdown, so to speak. But with that being said, you know, even though it was it was changed like that, they also gave it the minus armor, which is just a straight buff. That mm -hmm. is that is just mm -hmm. huge, especially with a uh, you know death prophet on your team and a monkey king ult. If they can get the AOE minus armor, it's like an AOE desolator. You have death prophet ulti going, doing all this AOE <laughs> physical damage, and then you have monkey king ult doing all this AOE physical damage. It is. Uh, that is some uh, potential annihilation in a, in a team fight. Uh, for your sniper. Nope, it's just uh, the monkey king hanging out over. Uh, so they've opted to actually get the alone here attack. with the, uh, the juggernaut. This is going to be very difficult for him to get any farm, I think. You know, you're going to have that being constantly, you know, 
Flix top lane though, looks like that rider's gonna try to run himself out, does have a fairy fire. He's still putting a lot of damage. One more hit, it's gonna be Moonlight. First blood to I'm zero. just getting started. It's quite unfortunate to be in a in a lane where you actually rotated to have the Batrider have a good lane and then back his first blood. That that really hurts. I need to restart my Dota by the way. I'm stuck on the Oh, okay. Those busy fiending Sammy Boy versus Gunner and Club and Corvus. <laughs> it's so funny, they actually party queue into each other. And that's that's gonna be, you know, a matchup that we're gonna see in this tournament <laughs> is those two teams. Mm. Um, I'm getting back here. No problem, no problem. We're just watching this top lane here. You see, you know, Mike's trading coming out between the uh Rimstroke and the Bane. Trying to equalize that just a little bit here. In the mid lane, Death Prophet's doing uh, pretty well here. 7 and 5 CS as compared to the Quap sitting at 2 and 2. Sammy Boy is getting the uh, better end of the steal right now. That's surprising. I, I, I do think Queen of Pain is pretty good against Death Prophet, but I, I think that's more so when she gets a level 2 point in the dagger. You can start uh, pressuring the DP a lot more. And uh, up until that point, she can kind of harass you and get CS with the, with the crypt, especially now that it costs a lot less mana. Is better. So where do we think, are we going to see the most action in that bottom lane, do you think? I think so, because I, I think if you're a Jug Grimstroke lane, the way that you outlane um, off by training them, because the monkey is literally lifesteal from you and mm. do something like that, you have to kill them. So you're basically forced if you want to win this lane. They could also just choose to wash the lane, where they just keep chain pulling and Jug tries to kind of farm. Depends on how they want to go with this, but I think with a Grim Jug, Jug is level 3, you have enough damage. Sammy Boy, though, is going to get ganked here by Moonlight. Did have himself an invis. One more hit. Nope, he's got the fairy fire. Sammy Boy going to be able to survive this. It's a little bit longer. It does have that lie. shadow dagger on him, but I think he's going to be able to make it through. Yeah, looks like that's going to be the case. And the other thing, I think, didn't they change Inkswell, too, on Grimstroke now? Grimstroke is able to cast it on, uh, I believe, Magic Immune. So, like, if Jug is spinning. Oh, true. Yeah. So that's actually a pretty strong lane. But, yeah, again, they do have good saves. They've got, you know the Bane that's going to be able to just throw the Nightmare out afterwards as long as they don't get too, too low. Top lane, uh, the first crown get crossed, followed up with the Bramble Maze here. Zero trying to run himself right back over to Captain. It's going to be all right. So Batrider gets a kill on Mars, which is honestly what you would expect given that this lane is now a 2v2. Bat is one of the hardest counters in the game to Mars, in my opinion. If you uh, drop your ulti and spear and he's flying, he just flies out, out of, like, it doesn't spear him to the pit because <laughs> yeah. he's flying. So. Yeah. Uh, same thing goes with Night Stalker. If Night Stalker is ulted and he's flying, you can't spear him. It's very, it's very unfortunate. And then also Bat, of course, can just absolutely devastate any melee hero in lane. And of course, also Mars is great against uh, physical damage heroes. And Bat is, is purely magical. He doesn't magical. care about that. Yeah, no, not at all. Bottom lane though, the spin's gonna get thrown out here. They have that silence, Samson. Be okay. It is, it is this weird situation with uh, Grim Jug that you kind of both need level three to to kill this lane, but then once you're level three, then you have a Bane who has... Actually, maybe we're good. No, he's, uh, no, the slow coming out here. A couple more hits. Oh, oh Yamsun coming through, crit. though. Can he do enough body glide? Yeah, they're not going to follow up on Bloody Nine here. Yamsun does get the proc. I just got to farm with it. I think he just wants to get him off of uh, the Bane. Yeah. Mostly, than anything else. B9 used to solve, too. That's a pretty efficient solve. Very low HP. Oh, oh, top lane, lane, yeah, that rider was able to take down Mars. Bottom lane, though, again, we get the spin coming out from Siete. He really wants to get the kill over on to 9 9 get to the tower, oh. not going to be able to do it. See what you've it's, done. A, it's a weird situation to be a support in this lane because like, both of the carries are just harassing the supports because they know they can't do anything to each other. But like, Yamsun has too many items. Ooh, wow. a pain. Okay. I won't lie. That's another gank that was coming it. through over in the mid lane. Uh... Did they just both die to each other? I think they yeah. just died 1v1 to each other. I mean, Sammy Boy gets well, the no, there was first. A, yeah, there was a rotation that came out from the Dark Willow, too. Oh, okay. Willow's just kind of walking back Sienna. to base. Five-minute ruins. It's going to be able to grab it. He just grabs it just in time. They bottled it, too. So God, he's got full, Regeneration. full HP, full mana, ready to come back into this lane. I see him's got to be pretty happy, though. He did Dyer's get himself a regen in, because he was sitting very low on health and mana. He was here, though. Top lane. We'll be able to throw out that cursed crown. Dodge himself right towards that tower. The turn around now. Moonlight has got to uh, throw down that bramble maze. Try to run himself out. I think Mars can't lane up here without a support being here. I agree. Which is kind of problematic when you are Mars and possibly the best hero in Dota. Uh, but that, you know, that's the nature of counters. But, you know, you want your Jug, you want your Queen of Pain to 
have a little bit of support as well. I guess it's, uh, you know, case of supporting your tempo controlling hero, get Mars level 6, and then have him rotate, and then he doesn't need to lane, and then you can kind of support the Jug and the Queen of Pain sort of thing. That's that's always possible. That's something that VP does a lot, where they'll support their like mid-game hero and just sack their carry. Not that Jug is sacked too badly. No, but I think, uh, oh, mid lane, though. Oceana, he wants to try to find that kill. They will get the kill on Luchita. And take down the Queen of Pain, Exorcism, so has a little bit of time left, we'll be able to put some damage down onto this tower. Uh, Sammy's got, he's got, he's got a Salivana bottle too, so... Sammy boy's absolutely fine here. I like pretty much. Yeah, he's, he's, he's actually just tanking the tower for the Siege Creep. Yeah. This is what they're doing. They're keeping the Siege Creep alive. There's another TP coming in, though, from the Queen of Pain. So now boy needs to be careful that he doesn't... Yeah, doesn't have the 6 online, though. I think he's got it, although there's a the scream going forward. He's got the Shadow Dagger Zero making rotation, too. They've got that Spirit Siphon. We'll be able to take down Sammy Boy. Now Lucido's got to run himself out. He doesn't have the blink up just yet. It looks like he's going to get taken down. Oceana going to be able to get that kill. Zero still standing nearby. He's got a couple stats of Sticky over here. Onto Moonlight. He's going to try to juke him through, but nope. Zero's on a killing spree. And that all. Yeah, there goes Grimstroke in the bottom lane. The spin coming out here from Siete. Is he going to be able to turn it around? Yum, son. He's going to be chased down by the spin. Can he get himself a double kill? Oh, yeah, he can. Double kill. Uh, that's pretty huge for Joker. Uh He just got two solo kills, so he's uh, feeling pretty good about himself. Oh, yeah, and he's sitting at, like, no health right now. Like, pretty lucky, although... Ooh, Sammy boy, he wanted that Crypt Swarm. He wants Radiant's his kill. Tower has fallen. Gonna try to chase him through over here. Siete trying to break Dying some ankles. He's gonna oh, dodge he it again. In comes Moonlight. He's gonna be able to slow down the Death Prophet. Sammy boy will be forced to retreat. That is unfortunate. Sammy boy expected him to juke, but he actually just ran straight to the tower. Mm-hmm. Because uh, he picked up the face, so he feels like he's fast enough to just run to the run to the tower. Look how low Mars is sitting in this top lane. Zero almost able to get that kill. This is one of those weird situations where on Mars you kind of wish that you had phase boots before you make a rotation, but he's level 6. I think he actually just needs to go with the smoke and uh, pair up with another core right now and uh, and do something with this ultimate. And they do spot out the Batrider over on the side, have the Grimstroke top now. Bottom lane. Spin himself away, but they've got the Rolling Thunder coming out here from Oceania. He's going to keep tabs on him, and they'll be able to get the kill. Sammy Boy cleaning up, followed up with the Arena of Blood, though. Looks like this Death Prophet, nice Nightmare coming out, buys a little bit more time. Sammy Boy trying to put as much damage as he can as he rocks out of here. These Ghost Lakes are shredding everybody apart. The Sonic Wave actually just whips completely as they take down Mysterious, they'll take down Moonlight. Luchito's got to run away now. Radiance bottom tower. That was a disaster. Yeah, that that was not the time to use that arena. See, that's the problem of making a defensive rotation like that instead of an aggressive rotation. Is that you're rotating Radiance onto a team that's already set up, that has attack. already pressured your jug off the lane, that Radiance has already killed your support. It's not a rotation that you wanted to make in the first place. It's a rotation that you're forced to make. And if the enemy team is making better strategic decision decisions than you, and you're just you know, following what decisions they're forcing you to make, obviously Radiant's that's not going to be good because they're, they're choosing attack. to take that fight for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, not great. Not great stuff. I think what you probably want to do with Mars right now is bottom tower you need to go with Queen attack. of Pain. She does not have the ulti. So you, you probably actually want to go with the Juggernaut, pair up with the Omni Slash. Uh, like I said, even if Mars is having a really weak... Uh, lane, like if, if he has a really difficult lane, you get level six, your power your power just goes through the roof. This hero has the most ridiculous power spike at level six. Radiant's but you have to pair yourself up with somebody fallen. else that's strong. Queen of Pain is not strong, she does not have the ult. Jug does have the ult. So top lane, they are trying to make some moves over here onto the monkey king. They've got the first crown on him. We'll be able to rudiment play the Yamsa. Take him down. So Queen of Pain is one of those heroes though too, right? That like if she dies too many times, she really just oh, becomes rough. a non-faster. Yeah. Are attack. they still in this with this buff at this point? Uh, no. I, I, I would say not. I would say that's ha what you've just described is essentially happening. Queen of Pain mm -hmm. is 26 and 10 to Sammy Boy's 60 and 12. Yeah, she's not very high in the net worth right now, actually. Fourth from the bottom. Quap is going to need to pick up, like, two kills with uh, stealing kills with Scream mm -hmm. of Pain and, and Sonic Wave in the next fight. Probably, like, one of them on a core. And then she can come back and have some core farm. But as you can see, she's actually building into a Midas because her game is, is hurt that badly. And, uh... That's not where you want to be as a club. Definitely not, especially against a lineup like Monkey King, Death Prophet, Pango Support, and then Batrider. And Bane even as a support scales to be to be really to be really nice. The, the Grimstroke there's not really much to pair with the Grimstroke either. There's, there's no scaling. It's just you get the eggs from the Grimstroke eventually. So yeah. He will scale, but you don't have a Doom to go with the to go with the ultimate. So the scaling on the side of uh, Sai Kai, is that how you pronounce that? Siki? But it's Cyber Kingdom, so. Yeah. Sai Kai? 
I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask for clarification on that one. <laughs> Cyber Kingdom, though. CK. Some of them, the K is capital, and then for uh, for Luchito Mar Mario, he's got the lowercase K. I don't know. Do you know it's called an initialism? Whenever you pronounce uh, a, sh a short form with the letters, so like FBI is called is an initialism. It's not mm -hmm. an acronym, and then an, an acronym is is when you say it like Psychide. I won't lie. Oh, okay. That was unexpected. And all the time in no. my videos, I want to say, Just oh, this is an initialism, but no. I know people will point out, like, no, that's an acronym, <laughs> even though it's technically correct. Today I learned. I didn't it's know It's like any the of that. figurative literal thing where they've become right, the right. same yeah. because people misinterpret it. Mm -hmm. It's awkward, man. It's an awkward world that we live in. <laughs> Esports with If that's the most awkward thing that you have to deal with, though, you're living a pretty charmed life. Uh, I mean, you know, it's awkward being me, man. You're doing a great job there, Dyer's champ. You should know that. It's been a day already. <laughs> We've had some very interesting conversations <laughs> in the fun <laughs> yeah. They will take the top lane tower, though, and there's a, a haste rune available top, too. Like Moonlight might have uh, spotted that out as making this rotation here. Only sitting at level 4 right now on that willow. About a 4k net worth lead going over to the side of Black Sheep at this time. Radiant yep. are scanning. They have Arena of Blood up if they want to try to make something happen, but it, where's their damage? So, bottom lane. He's got to get disarmed. See, now they're, they're, they're kind of rotating through this, but. They're playing into their hands, I feel. That's yeah, like they're exactly. being too reactionary. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you're playing into an area that's warded. You're playing into an area that they've secured. They're, they're farming comfortably. They've got Sammy good boards up. Yeah, Sammy was even pressuring the lane. Like he's sitting in the lane because they know mm. that there's probably somebody behind him. Look at Yemson. He's doing a lot of scouting right now. Batrider's got that double damage. They're going to open up. They're going to try to go over here onto Mars. He's going to get stunned up this arm. They'll follow up with the Terrorize, though. We'll see the right back there. Falls Sonic Wave coming through. Takes down Zero. There's going to be the Arena of Blood. Yemson looks like he's not going to be able to escape this. Unless it's through death. And they're going to be able to chase down this uh, Pangolier over here a little bit. But Sammy Boy finds the kill, and they've got the Fiend's grip up on the Jugs. Yente will fall. I think B9 got a. He, he oh, got Quap? Quap? Is she going to make it time? <gasps> if he got two Javelin procs, he might actually kill him there. Well, if you don't mix it out. I think uh, Bloody Nine sent out the Tome of Knowledge in that fight and got six. And got well, the six he actually got seven, but seven. He, got, uh, he got the ultimate yeah. in that fight, and that's honestly the Bane. The Bane. Oh, so much damage. Oh, Dark Willow. She's gonna get silent stuff and the disarm. We'll go into the Shadow Realm, try to buy herself a little bit more time, but there's four heroes down here. That's the first crowd was hoping that they group up together. Oh, so they will fall. So they don't have the DPLP, but there is a siege creep here. So. I mean, they want to team fight off of it. Like, that's the big thing, right? If you're gonna be playing the map, you want to take fights on the enemy side so that way you can get these objectives. Yeah, that's true. It's working out. Even if you lose the fight on the enemy side, you know, they have to walk for 20 seconds Radiant's to get to your side to get objectives, and all attack. of a sudden you're all back alive, and Dyer's then you can miss middle spell, tower so. is under attack. It's almost always better in Dota to fight on the enemy side of the map. Mm -hmm. Although, I do have to say, after, you know, Team Secret being Team Secret, that has changed a little bit. I mean, that There's, is Team Secret, though. Yeah. But I would they, argue they're one of the best teams in the world right Yeah, now. of course. Uh, they're the best. Team Secret. I, I was best. trying to be, I'm trying not sure. to be, you know, super. Oh, no, they... Listen, man, I'm a big Zai fanboy. This, these people, they know Dota better than anybody. I don't they're know. They're right They really. haven't figured out. They haven't. And they're going to be able to find themselves killing this Grimstroke here bottom no, lane. Cool. Sammy Boys is on a mega kill streak. Actually, speaking of Secret, I have some inside information here. I know that this team in particular, I mean, I think everybody's studying Secret, but I know that they they base a lot of their movements on, on like what Secret is doing. Mm -hmm. That is a specific thing that they... That they I mean, I, I know a lot of people do that, but there's also VPs and these other teams that people... Mm -hmm. LGDs... VGs, you know, but th these guys are like huge Dota fanboys, which I can respect. Who isn't? Who isn't after watching them play? But they're, they're they're doing a really good job at securing this bottom area of the map. Monkey King now just goes to the kind of farming top role, which I think probably was his play originally, but he was, you know, when you have a gold lead like this at 13 minutes, it kind of feels like, okay, I'm just going to, off the back of my team, kind of show up to a fight, get some free kills, and, you know, come online, so to speak, that way, but, uh, in a, in a game where you know, you're not really, really good about just snowballing, you probably want to play top tower map on Monkey King and essentially take the space in the most direct way. You have a smoke over here, Moonlight. Well, open up with the Bramble Maze, follow up with the Shadow Roll. It's Chris Crown trying to smoke this up. Sammy Boy trying to start himself out. They've got enough damage. The Sonic Wave will be able to take it down. They've got the Soul Bind. You have to be able to hold the Willow, hold that Pangolier into place. with the end, will be able to go run himself away, though. And that Terrorize over here. Oh, Bloody Knight. Is he going to be able to find the kill over here onto the Marth? No, but he's going to be able to walk himself out, possibly. Although they'll fall to the Shadow Realm. 
And the nightmare at the last second, trying to just buy some more time. Just what I fall. was waiting for. I'm putting you to good sleep. Good on them for ditching uh, the area, but it's also really good for Cyber Kingdom right now to take this fight and to win because we talked about objectives, but an objective in Dota is also the fact that they're dewarding now. So this area is no longer secure Radiance because the wards are gone. So smoking into that area and taking that fight, even though it's your own jungle and that feels weird, and if you don't win a fight, it feels really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, when you when you do you know successfully kill the Death Prophet or something, it's like. You don't get that much, but you get the warp. You get the vision. And that's really important because that means that uh, the Sammy Boy squad can't just sit on this high ground like they've been doing the entire game. And uh, Bottom lane, Sammy Boy. He's getting insert on. There's four heroes down here. This is completed, though. A little bit more time. They have the Bedlam. to be able to burst him down. He's still alive, though. They've got the Curse Crown. He's got all these spirits up. They're going to be able to turn this around, Jake. In the fall of the Arena Blood, they'll be able to get the kill over onto Death Prophet, but they'll be able to get two kills over onto Moonlight and Siete, as now Mysterious is trying to run himself away. Luchito hiding over here into the trees, trying to get out. Going to be able to get both of them out, but they do end up losing the drug. They'll lose the Dark Willow. <laughs> yeah, Bat's really good in this game. This is this is just like a really nice Bat game. Other than the other than the Juggernaut, uh, the Willow really easy around. to chase down. The Mars really easy to chase down. Uh, Grimstroke, like, these heroes have ways of, of you know stopping Bat temporarily. But even if Queen of Pain blinks away, she still keeps the Napalm stacks on her. You can still chase her. And uh, of course, you have all the movement speed of the boots of travel and the Firefly. This we got a double wind lace going on here too on Bat Rider. Oh, is he is he gonna go? Pro eventually Yules, I suppose. Um, I mean, they don't stack, so... Yeah, it was just kind of interesting to, to notice. I'm pretty sure they don't stack, unless... I don't believe they stack. I'm pretty sure they don't stack. I don't believe they stack, no. That would have been a huge... Really? We could have seen a whole oh, thread yeah. about that. Yeah, they do not they... stack, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, just, I, watch, I look at it, so I feel like... Maybe, maybe we're missing stacks, something. Yeah, no, 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 no. that makes stack. sense, you know? Because I've done this going for, you know, drums, wind lays, and then it doesn't do anything. Sure they really want to jump over here on Toast. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be able to use the Rolling Thunder. Zero is already trying to find his way over to the Lido. He's able to go throw out that Soul Bind, hold him into place. He's got Rolling Thunder going on. They'll follow up with a big silence as they push them away. And it looks like Cyber Kingdom is going to reset here. It's a lot of heroes over here in this mid lane. Of course, they don't have the Monkey King. He's in the bottom. Getting a little bit of split. Radiant's pushing. bottom tower is under attack. You can attack. definitely take a fight now if you're Black Sheep because. Uh, Really, all you use there was Firefly, the Pango ulti, it's a Pango support, you use that up in 38 seconds, and there's no group stroke ulti, that's a really important ulti in this game, because it's not the Pango from Volvo. Bottom lane, Bloody Nine, he doesn't have the Fiend's grip up, so... He needs to go and pitch her over here onto the end, he's gonna get stunned up silent, they've got the lasso, they've got the ghost, nice big sonic wave coming out, but it doesn't do enough damage, he's gonna be able to go try to dodge through here, using that ulti that... Yeah, is going to be able to follow the monkey king. There's a jump forward again. Look at them. They're all sitting so low. He has some slow bloody nine slow, but they're going to be able to take down the grim stroke. They'll take down the co-op. And now everybody else is trying to run themselves away from Sammy Boy. Curse Crown will be able to slow down. But now Mars. Oh, can they get him out in time? No, that last crypt score coming out from Sammy Boy. Going to be able to clean up. That was super unfortunate. So what happened there is the team fight split into two groups. There was everybody focusing Sammy Boy in the tower, and then... Everybody on the side of Black Sheep was at least the campaign that they were focusing Radiant's over to the right. Uh, basically, it was split into two groups. Mm -hmm. One of the groups killed the killed the mid. <laughs> the other group didn't. Like the Mars dropped his ulti, and Sammy Boy Yules, and Mars tried to time his spear so that it would hit him when he came down from the Yules. But he actually threw it too early, so it went straight through the Yules, and the Mars ulti did no damage to Sammy Boy. I think if he hits that spear, they actually kill Sammy Boy there, and that fight was completely different. Oh, yeah. And they just take down the they pop super easily using the Fiend's Grip, and they even end up using that Rolling Thunder. It's so nice having a Fiend's Grip on your team if you're a Pango or a DP. Just lock it's them down. super valuable. Things that can pierce the KB are just, they're, they're super valuable. And Bat's like super good too, right? You've got the Monkey King, you've got Bat Rider. Both of these heroes give you lots of vision. And yep. I know that's something that, I think PPD says that. Like whenever they're drafting Radiant's for Ninjas in Pajamas, they want to make sure that they've got some sort of Dyer's hero, whether it's a Beastmaster or something, attack. a tree, that's going to be even, able to provide like them a, with the information. Like a long -term player. Although yeah. player, players are pretty weak ability now. It used to be one of the better vision abilities, just because vision abilities suck, but now, now there's a lot. Oh, there's a jump in with a Firefly, the lasso. This Mars is a non-factor. Puny oh, God. Tower is under attack. It's hard for him. I get it, though. It's 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 not an easy game. It, Pango's a counter to Mars. You just roll through the ultimate. Uh, Death Prophet seems to be very Radiant's good against the hero. He's got high attack. HP, and Death Prophet does magic damage. You can't block the ghost. Uh, and then Batrider, of course, is, is a hard counter. So really, it's just Bane and Monkey. 
go on in a fight, realistically, if you're Mars. Which is why I think rotating early matters a lot, and which is why I really like they went for a Blink Rush. I think this is the correct build on Mars, is to just entirely focus on, like, getting the right initiation on the back line so you can get the bang. It's, it's really important. You don't have that damage, That's the, the biggest issue, I feel like, with this particular setup. Yeah, Quap is... Quap has a Midas, and... She uh, fell behind really hard. Jug is... And Jug's doing pretty well. Jug's got, you know, drums, Yasha. They focus him down so fast. That's the issue here. Oh, Willow, 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 Moonlight. It is gonna be great for you. Perform. Oh, no. See, the thing is, Jug... Tonight? Jug just doesn't... Yes. Like, Mars Jug. Is that a combo? I don't think so. It's just... The hero, he's not doing bad. You know, he's, Jug's the one that's having a good game. But if there's Radiant only one hero having scanning. a good game, you have a bunch of single target, you just focus him. And that's what they've been doing. Yeah. So there's that play. And then also, I just don't think Jug Mars is particularly... Radiant's some particularly flashy combo. It's not like Willow Mars or... Uh, we know, haven't seen a Willow Death combo Prophet yet. Mars or Radiant's like that. Tower has yeah, fallen. we... we they, they've been using the fear to kind of, like, get the Disengage. hell out of Dodge. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the whole thing is that Avalanche. Oh, this Yule is again. Wait, a little bit more. Oh, look at that. The funny night. That nightmare, but I still think he's gonna get taken down along with Sammy Boy here. Must be you can see the potential in their team fights with these heroes. <laughs> it just seems like it's easier to ex like it's a simplicity thing with draft, right? That's a big deal. The like, easier the draft is to execute, the better off you generally are, right? And it feels like this has maybe a little too many pieces that have to fit together on the side of Cyber Kingdom. Which, yeah. When they fit together, of course, naturally, it's great, but naturally that definitely happens more. Than because, it, you know, it's, it's like you need to hit three spells instead of two damage. Mars is not in for some fun here. He's going to get rolled around. The pinball coming through. Yeah, going to be able to get himself a kill. He's still looking. He's open. Oh, the Grim Stroke is really close. But not going to get it this time. I still think Mars is an S tier hero, but it is really unfortunate. You know what? It's not unfortunate. I'm not going to say that because I, I, I hate Mars players or whatever. <laughs> It's not unfortunate, it's great. But, uh, it's, you know, there's all these hard counters to Mars that are also Radiant extremely Radiant. popular, very strong heroes, Radiant's such as a Pangolier. Like, even if Mars attack. wasn't in Dota, Pango would still be a very strong hero right now. Even yeah. if Mars wasn't in Dota, Batrider is still a top tier hero right now. It right? feels like everyone's, like, very, very... Not overpowered, but oh, to hold that thought as we get another lasso coming through here. He's gonna try to take the Luchito before he can blink out, and he is just gonna get wiped off the map. Already the Willow TPs herself in. You see Siete, he wants nothing to do with this. He's gonna run himself out, but they might be able to get the skill over onto the Willow. There's gonna be the Yules coming out. Yamsun winning patiently over here. He starts to hold up there with the Terrorize. Nice spear coming through from Mars. We'll push back Yamsun. He does have the uh, Cursed Crown, and he's gonna be able to go jump over into the tree to safety, though, while this is going down. And Batrider finds himself another kill over here onto the the uh, Grimstroke, and they'll follow up Dark Willow. She almost made it out. That Crypt Swarm coming through, though, from Sammy Boys. They're going to chase down the Silence coming out. Again, Mars gets taken down. That was nice from Yamsun. Yamsun links to the third. He jumps in the back lines and stuns the Willow, so she can't fear. And then they actually pick up both kills instead of possibly neither. Uh, sometimes you just see a team. I mean, the thing is, it's a 14k gold lead, so this is obviously relatively easy to execute at this point. But it's still nice to see a team that just they win a fight based on good team fight execution. That's, that doesn't happen that often in Dota. It's kind of like the game is very strategic. You support somebody up so it's a 4v5, so you win the fight. But that was just straight up good, good team fight. I just realized one of their avatars is just Jackie now. <laughs> he just placed it down. Oh boy. Another team fight coming through, though, followed up with that cursed ground as they get the soul bind off. There's gonna be a couple bounces here coming out from Shug. We'll be able to go pop the Aegis, but now Siete, he's gotta run himself away, and that's Terrorize coming through at the last second. They'll be able to drag back over onto the side, though, and they not gonna be able to grab the pop this time around. Mars trying to use that ultimate just to make some space over here. Big silence coming out from Sammy Boy. The BKB duration is over. Bloody Nine gonna try to TP himself out over here on the side. They go and they throw the Curse Crown out over onto Oceana. He's totally fine with this because he's gonna be able to use the Yule, maybe, and jump himself away. Nope, he will fall, but they managed to get the Death Prophet out, and they managed to get the Monkey King out as well. Those those are really ballsy TPs from Black Sheep. I think because Monkey got out, they had no choice where you just kind of say, okay, let's all TP and sack whoever ends up dying. But I, I think that was an opportunity. That was definitely an opportunity for Cyber Kingdom. It's just really unfortunate for them that Black Sheep positioned really nicely in the trees, so they weren't able to see. Like the Mars had his spear up, right, and there was two teepees in the trees. He just wasn't. He just wasn't able to interrupt them because he didn't see them. So he's not just going to blindly throw a spear because that's not. That's just. You know, rolling the dice. You're not going to do that. Well, sometimes I feel like you do have to. Like with Marana, sometimes you just, you know, take a leap of faith. Not the actual. I feel like Mars is consistent. I this is this is an actual like talking point. Like this is something that I think about too with Mars, where 
sometimes I want to do that, and I want to play it like it's arrow, but then I feel like the hero's so broken that you can consistently use the spear anyway. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do just want to just jump in and spear somebody out, just try it, just like in the fog, you know? Yeah. But then somebody's like, th then it, it sucks because if you don't have spear for the ulti, your ulti's kind of useless. Cause you can't spear somebody this side. Well, I mean, in this case, they do have the Dark Willow if they're able to get true, that combo true. off. True, so, true. That... Like, using the spear to initiate is very mm -hmm. legitimate in this case, because you don't need the... That's true. Like, it's completely different when you're not the, your own setup. Radiant but it, it's a weird hero because of that. Because, like, you would want to use the spear for, you know, hooking people and just stunning to start fights. That's like, you don't have the spear for the ultimate. I mean, ideally, you... It, it's, the, it's tough right now for Cyber Kingdom because of the fact that they, you know, you have a quap, right? And you were kind of hoping that your quap was going to be your tempo controlling mid hero. That's going to be initiation as well. So it's not all just on your your poor Mars here. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, Luchito's had a lot of trouble this game. He hasn't been able to find the farm. He's got a Midas, like we talked about. He's starting to catch up a little bit, but he's still so far behind from where he needs to be. And the rest of the team, you know, you've got the BKB up over on the Death Prophet. He's got quite a bunch of items. He's working on the Axe up there. He's just blocking high ground now with the exorcism. He's got an arcane rune, yeah, it's easy. You might as well. The exo well. right there. Force, force the glyph, maybe. They have glyph. Yeah, and they get the drag back over here. Are they going to be able to find the kill on Dark Willow? She's taking some damage from that Firefly. Taken out here. Ghost just zooming around. Yam's not going to be able to join up. They'll throw out a stroke of fate. Doesn't really slow them down at all, though. We still have about half duration here of the exorcism. Seriously. If he goes in there, he's just dead, I think. Yeah, he throws out the spear. BKB coming out from Sammy Boy. He's just going to keep on working these racks. He's got that arcane run up. It's just about to go down, though, with this exorcism. He does just erased. He does not exist anymore. And the jump board coming out here from Bat. He's just trying to lay down that sticky day count. But they also have the BKB. Mars is forced to run himself away. That ulti's not doing anything. They take down the other set of the Brax here. That's honestly my favorite use of exorcism now. Is just you just literally show up to their high ground and press it and just and just say, "All right, you're gonna fight us where we take your racks." Because the ghosts don't move fast enough to do damage in fights unless you have some sort of lockdown. They're still trying to go over here. There's, oh, Mars! Mars has to be really careful. The signs though will get thrown out over onto Death Prophet. Nice the He's got that spin coming around the fear right into the bramble maze. Try to use this bedlam, take down Bloody Knight, but they're not going to be able to do it. Sammy Boy, he's got the BKB up, he's forced to use the Yules. He comes up trying to dodge around a little bit, turns himself into the tree. Silence is going to get used again over here on Junk. Is he going to be able to find this spell, the Monkey King? He's not. The lasso's back up, he's going to be able to get dragged through these trees, and that's going to be the end of Siete. Mysterious. They're not even done. They're not even done. They're going to keep on chasing. They've got a nightmare over here on Mysterious. They've got a silence on the Grimstroke. He's going to get taken down. Sonic Wave pushes everybody back. Doesn't do enough damage to take anyone out, though. Actually, did they take... When did Monkey King get taken down, actually? Uh, the Mars blinked in and speared. He speared him? Grabbed the old kill there, yeah. Which I'm... Which... Now that now that we talked about it, I, I think that, you know, obviously retrospect is, yeah, is yeah. easy. In Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um... But I, I do think that starting fights with the spear and then using the Willow combo with the ultimate is actually the play in this game. Like, they need somebody they need somebody to, to just go in. It can't just be Queen of Pain running in and dying or Jug running in and dying. Right. It, it has to be Mars, like, essentially playing like a Batrider. But uh, it's a hard it's a hard call to make. It's a, like Once again, we looked at it and, you know, looking back in the game, it, it looks like that definitely would be a really solid play. Um, especially with the Queen of Pain having this much farm. Like, you know, Midas... Almost Aghanim Scepter, Dual Scepter. Like, it's been a really rough game for me to paint. It's a 20k gold lead right now going out from the side of Black Sheep. Yeah. Like, this is just this is very, I, very difficult. I do want to say, though, if you do go late game with the Queen of Pain, this this hero is a, ri a ridiculous utility late game hero. Like, she scales very nicely just because of the, f the fear talent. But I don't think they're going to give them the chance. It feels like they're being very efficient on the side of Black Sheep. True. Although they'll go right into a smoke over here. They're going to start to go up with that Terrorize. will follow up. Nice spear coming through, though. We'll get bounced back and forth as they'll follow up. Oceana, he does have that Rolling Thunder. It's going to be able to go through Bloody Nine. He's got the Fiends Grip up, but it looks like the Bob going to be able to get the kill. Followed up with the Wukong's Command, though, and they're going to be able to chase down Siete. He can't afford to fall here. He will get taken down. Mysterious will be taken out as well. And Moonlight, the GG gets called. Black Sheep gonna take this first best of one today with a 21k net worth lead. All right, I'm gonna shout out to my boy Nusham and my boy B9 too for being positioned in a really good position. This is something that you see high level supports do all the time on five, where they just walk in and feed, and then Twitch chat is like lull feed, you know. Like yeah. But uh, him being there is actually so awful for Cyber Kingdom. It, they, that is the worst hero to run into.